morning. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Can you all hear me? <clears throat> Kedi. Kedi. That's good. Just a minute, sir. Uh, just a minute, please. Okay, shall we get started? Yeah. All good, everyone, good morning, good morning.
Shall we get started? Yes, okay. Oops, I'm sharing my screen here. still taking time come on okay so yesterday we completed uh, you see my screen share now okay thanks So, sir, now all looks good. We discussed about licensing yesterday. We saw cost calculations, how much, um, how much it may cost for a company to purchase SQL Server. Now, it all depends on how many cores they have, how many processors they have, I mean or it all depends on how many servers they have. Yes, sir, agree? That was the discussion all about yesterday. We talked about different licensing models. One was core-based licensing model, and second was server plus, server plus CAL, client access licenses. So I think that discussion we will part now. So, you know, additions, you know, versions, you know, components, you know, licensing. Um, I think nothing should stop us from going ahead and installing SQL Server. And before we install SQL Server, sir, this one picture on the screen. So please don't think this is the complete picture. The proper architecture is yet to come. This is not a complete picture, but this is mostly a, a simple reference to future. No. So... What is SQL Server architecture? So SQL Server architecture simply says that if you store data in the database, where is it storing? So if you can look at this picture, we can easily break down the picture into three parts. The bottom at the last, at the last, you have what? Storage engine, okay, storage engine. And in the middle, you have environment okay execution environment and on the top you have this all block is sql os um so again, again i mean don't try to understand the words now but just understand the concept rather than the words so if you can see input your this three forms are input forms and this is an output form result meaning let's say uh, Sri Lakshmi, you are typing, you are, run, you are executing a query. You are writing a query in the database. I told you, right, sir, databases cannot, you can't go and open a database directly. If you want to talk to a database, mm -hmm. you need a language. Yeah, structured SQL. query language, SQL, right? You can't do, you just can't open a database and see what's inside. That's all not possible. If you want to see some data, you have to, everything must be a command, which you will see shortly in a demo. So 
normally what will you, you you will do you will send a query you will submit a query query means sql query once you send a query the query will have to the query will have to travel travel and go inside the database inside the the so database is here please remember this is database in the middle, so look at the by the video. I hope you remember the last picture, sir, which I showed you DBMS, RDBMS picture. Yeah, look at that. Your database is always at the bottom. You have what in the middle? DBMS. Database. If a user wants to talk to the database, user must go through what? DBMS. The DBMS software and then read the data, write the data, modify data. Same picture, sir, but you know, in a different form. Nothing, nothing more than that. It's the same picture, but in a different form. See, in this form, what happened is your database is at the bottom. This is the user who is submitting the query. The middle part is nothing but your DBMS there. Here it is nothing but SQL Server, our DBMS. And sir, so, so Katie, now I explain what. So nothing, sir, whenever you write a query, whenever you want to interact with the database, the query will go submit and talk to parser uh, by the way katie what about in the sql os in the middle okay so sql os will discuss but but remember the query so look at my cursor sir the query will go directly to parser that is the first job why parser because parser will check whether you have written correct spellings or not Whatever query you typed, right? There could be grammatical mistakes. There could be English-wise concerns or spelling mistakes or anything. So mainly SQL messages, meaning queries when submitted, they will touch the parser first. What will parser do? Parser will parse your query. It will do two things. Syntax checking, semantic checking, syntactic checking, semantic checking so what is a syntactic checking sir checking whether spellings are correct or not in simple words spelling check syntax check semantic check means see let's say uh, as i said sai lakshmi you you wanted to select data from employee table there is a table called employee table and you are reading data from employee table so you mentioned select star from star means all the data select star from employee table so syntax check will verify whether spellings are correct or not s e l e c t select spelling correct or not star there is no spelling though from f r o m from spelling uh, correct or not select star from employee employee is the table name right so employee spelling it will not check it will only check this main syntax spelling later on semantic check will happen sir semantic check means it will go and see whether employee table is there or not. So if employee table is not there and Sai Lakshmi, you are selecting data from employee, there is no table at all. How will you get the data? It will throw an error. If spelling is wrong, then also. So, so, so in simple words, sir, I can rather show a demo. If you want to just watch it, nothing more. Just a minute. It's loading. Okay, so meanwhile, sir, let me take a notepad. You select star from employee is the command, sir. Select is a keyword that always will remain same. Star is a column, list of columns. Or you can, if not star, you can mention employee number, employee name, salary, something like that. Uh, if you don't want to mention columns, sir, multiple columns, just put star, all columns will come, all data will come from from is again a keyword employee so syntax check will check what sir just you tell me it will check spelling of select it will check spelling of from that's it semantic check will do what sir semantic check it will check whether of course a star is one star means all columns how many columns are there star it will verify comma whether employee table exists or not it will verify so this is the job of a parser. Again, sir, please note, I am explaining in very, very, very basic terminology. Yes, of course, we can go deep and talk later. 
but for now this is more than enough so for example now look at this i have ignore ignore what you're seeing so but just trying to show you something one minute sir look at this uh, same same commands um, yeah select star from there is a table called db store okay i am selecting data so for example if i type spelling wrong select star from form obviously it will throw an error that means in the background what it did it did a syntactic check so that means parser itself checked and said command wrong throw the error 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 will be thrown back that's all i mean this management studio will discuss later but but technically this is what happens in a parser any questions so okay no questions sir that is a job of a parser sir sometimes in your query um, we may write algebra algebraic expressions meaning select star from employee uh, from employee where employee number equal to 2 into 3 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 9 into 10 you know something like that so mathematical or algebraic expressions if you do see for example where employee number where employee number or where where salary greater than salary salary column salary is greater than 2 into 3 plus 23 into 290 minus 4 uh, divided by 25 um, and or into multiplied by 20000 something like that some mathematical expressions i gave so this all mathematical expressions must be converted right to a proper number where algebra here plays that role so something like algebra has one more meaning sir which i'll explain later but all in all sir parser will do syntactic check semantic check um algebraizer and compiler will do conversion of that code into a query tree we'll discuss later and sir optimizer is the most important part of the architecture optimizer will decide how fast i should execute this query how fast because optimizer is the brain of sql server you can almost take it like that optimizer is the brain of sql server it decides how fast i should execute the query but more about it coming in future sir manager which monitors whether entire process is going properly or not and finally so ignoring all of this query will be executed so technically speaking whenever you submit a query the query must go through all these phases and finally sir when it is executing it enters execution environment right it, it, this is all an execution environment only the query will be finally executed and when results comes up the results will be sent back to customer so let's say sai, sai lakshmi ran the query right in this case so sai lakshmi employee number salary greater than something this these these are the employees whose salaries are greater than this number so that is the meaning of so query comes here goes through parser finally executes and ta 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 go to the results go to the customer whoever is asking the query so now kd hold on i'll take the question somebody was saying something two minutes please so sir once this goes off result comes to the customer fine the point is kd what about okay so one second uh query wants to wants data right sir you you want data where is data coming from whatever query is executing right all data is coming from the data will be picked from storage engine and then given to the user so kd query comes like this walks through this executes here gets data from database and gives it to customer right perfect then what about this part of the architecture sir? what is a lock manager what is memory manager what is buffer pool what is scheduler what are synchronization services what is a deadlock monitor this all are not even discussions of today we will discuss this all all this in level 3 level 3 is all about architecture performance indexes all that wonderful topics are waiting there so so but so that means we are not going to talk about this one but sir whenever the query is going through all this right all these phases this is very, very they are supporting characters 
when query is going through parser, optimizer, compiler, algebraizer, execution, in all these phases, they all support the queries. They support. Without SQL OS, nothing these guys can do. Without SQL OS, none of them can do any task. So technically, a query comes, passes through all this, passes through all this, and results go out. Database provides all the data. SQL OS provides all the power to do the tasks. That's it. This is that's all I wanted to talk about this picture at a very basic level. Any questions, please? Uh, query, I have two questions. I missed the part query optimizer and CLR. No, no, we what did not. This? We did not talk about them. CLR means common language runtime. Okay. Uh, and we did not discuss about them because those will be discussed in level three. Okay. But uh, in simple words, optimizer is the brain of SQL Server how to execute the query quickly, how to run the query fast is decided by optimizer. Based on the decisions taken by optimizer, the query either runs fast or the query either runs slow. See, for example, I want to travel from Bangalore to Hyderabad. Uh, hmm. Let's say I want to travel at, I want to travel at uh, morning 9 a.m. Example I'm seeing. Now, I should use my mind because if I'm traveling to Hyderabad at 9 a.m., definitely it's traffic time, two hours I'll spend in the city, coming outside the city, right? So what I can do is use the shortcuts. See, this is where my brain should work. My brain is following Google as it is. I will definitely spend time two hours in the city. If I use my brain a little more sharper, I can take some shortcuts and go quickly, right? So that's why my optimizer is my brain here. So depending on what decision my optimizer takes, I'll reach Hyderabad in seven hours or maybe 10 hours. Okay, uh, so in the parser itself, that execution environment is there, no? no. Uh, uh, parser is the first phase. Parser will only do spelling checking and okay. checking whether columns exist or not or tables exist or not. That's all parser will do. Then execution environment is another layer. No, this whole thing is the execution environment, but parser will do the parsings and slowly then algebra. Everybody have one responsibility to do here. Finally, yeah. all of them together make sure that the query is executed. So when I say queries, uh, everyone here, every query you run in SQL Server, anything, sir, any command you run in SQL Server, every command must go through these things. With 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 few with few exceptions, but mostly this process is common. Yeah, KD. How we can know that uh, the final result which we got is the correct answer? See, sir. Now, the point is, it's all about trust because the engine does, see, what you have written is what we get. So, depending on the query, you know, I, we can validate the results. We can go and check the data. Validation is always possible. We can validate. Sir. Okay. Always verify whether you got right data or not. Absolutely. Uh, Anyways, we'll do that later. But yes. Uh, Kade, if I'm not wrong, so uh, the parser uh, data, uh, parser section, that layer and uh, execution environment, data, metadata interface, all comes under one layer and storage engine comes under another layer. That's how... Uh, so technically, Kade? this is not the perfect picture though, but, but one thing. Mm -hmm. Storage engine is one layer. One, one. Yeah. See, SQL Server architecture has got three parts. Uh -huh. Everyone, listen, sir. I'm giving the names now, but I'll talk about that in future. SQL Server architecture mainly has three parts. Storage engine. Yeah. Storage engine means where you store your data. One more relational engine. The above part. Okay, the above part is called as relational engine. So relational, all, all, entire thing together. Uh, Sandhya. The SQL OS, see yeah. again, don't look SQL OS as separate because SQL OS supports this entire layer. If SQL OS is not there, none of the work will happen here. SQL okay. OS is compulsory. Let's say you want to parse, you want to check the syntax, whether the syntax is right or not. For that, scheduler is required. Mm. 
if scheduler is not there syntax checking itself is not possible so for every step that we are taking here sql os is the backbone so technically this is called as a relational engine the yeah. bottom one is called as storage engine one more is there client interface network interface we'll talk about that later so three parts sni sql server network interface second one is storage engine at the bottom this all is called as relational engine so three parts are there so don't don't even write now sir let's discuss that when level 3 comes everyone and thank you sandhya thank you shivateja for calling me kd not calling me sir thank you any other questions okay. please kd regarding architecture if we google like we get multiple different uh, diagrams i mean multiple different architectures so what is the exact architecture Like we get multiple solutions and multiple answers for this. So uh, what what uh, Prajat is saying is, if you go to SQL Server architecture and like to, more defined and everything. Yeah. So if you go to SQL Server architecture and search for SQL Server architecture, different pictures will come up, different forms of picture. Okay. Whereas whereas if you go and search for Oracle architecture, it's just telling you the difference. Okay. i mean of course we should appreciate oracle for that wonderful work if you notice sir hall will speak about one picture only graphics and color might change right sir got it see look at this if you look at any oracle architecture on meaning sir oracle is good at documentation especially okay so sql server um, okay 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 job not i would say not perfect on the documentation part so but sir the documentation is very good for sql server but something like this you know they could have given a better pre, pre proper architecture that whenever you want to check sql server architecture like oracle architecture i showed you the picture looks perfect right nice drawing and all that i wish we had one so prajot this question will discuss at level 3 again sir. but the point is yes proper architecture is not there but sir when you google for it multiple pictures you will see i would tell you one thing refer this one picture okay as of now sir refer this one picture everyone we'll talk about this picture see look at this one sir what is it saying what is engine relational engine i told you right few minutes back and what is this one storage engine so relational engine storage engine and sql server network interface person who is connecting so three parts you will mostly have we'll talk so prajot to answer that question in one line sir refer this architecture picture better than anything else sure thanks yeah okay done sir now any if no questions are there on the architecture uh, let us pause here by the way everyone sir what is our end motto now now you 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 let's spend 6 days with sql server now your travel is 6 days with sql server my question to all of you now sir is what next so now you understood multiple components you understood multiple the uh, 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 story about the sql server and all that so now time to install so if you are okay let's go ahead and install now that means sir kd what are we going to do now we are going to install one sql server in my laptop we'll do it now and i'll start with sql server 2005 sir the first version not the first version i'm sorry at least the one that we should start with our first version actual one is 1.0 so uh what i have done sir i have kept my media in in handy meaning i have downloaded media and i have kept it handy in my c drive in media folder so i why is the word media used right so uh, normally it's a posh word that you use in the office so you also get habituated to it media means software that's it. sql server software some people call it binaries binaries b i n a r i e s binaries some people call media some people call software directly your choice but mostly unanimously you will hear the word media more okay so anything is okay get ready for all the words okay then media folder sir so what i have done i have kept some software dumped okay this is 19 ignore uh, in the old folder i think i should be having 2005 where are you where are you? 2005 so i'll be giving you this media okay you'll be getting this media 
um, but just wait for some more time. So please wait till I finish all the software installations. Let me finish five. You will not do any lab till then, okay? Let me show you completely the entire five, eight, eight, R, eight and eight R2 are same. 12 and 14 are same. But anyways, five, eight R2, 12, 14, 16, 17, 19. I will show you all these versions installations. Sir. Then technically you can, then you start your lab. Okay, so first one. Sir. When, 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 when you are down, so there are two ways of getting the software. I can send you one link, one option, or second best option is it is available on the Microsoft website. I will tell you from where you have to download. I'll give you the instructions and everything. You can use that instruction set to download the software. Are you clear? Oh, so assume that I got software like that. Huh? I will right click on 2005 and click on. So, sir, uh, did you notice my file is in which format? File name. ISO. 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 Uh, what is ISO is nothing but it's an image file, sir. To avoid virus, to avoid virus, because see, if I keep the software extracted, um, virus spread can be possible. So, to avoid virus, I always, we always, when Microsoft also, sir, keeps the software in the ISO format common practice normally people do. Huh? So ISO is nothing but the image format, image. So you can right click on the ISO file. Uh, by the way, you need to install a software called WinRAR in your system. WinRAR or WinZip, some zipping software you have to have. So go to Google and search for WinRAR download. Okay, first, first, your laptop should have WinRAR software. Once you get the media, I'm saying. Hmm? So download WinRAR, install it. After that, yeah, this is the one, sir. Click on, don't buy, of course. Click on download WinRAR, free it comes. So you can install it. So after you install WinRAR, sir, then you get the software. I'll tell, I'll show you instructions how to download it. Now right click and say extract. Because the ISO file, right? You want to extract it and see what's the content inside. So, so by the way, sir, I can directly go and start the installation. First, I want to show you how that software looks like before installing. So, uh, by the way, yeah, next week onwards, I mean, next, today is Thursday. Uh, tomorrow is obviously Friday. Next Monday onwards, it is compulsory for everybody to be on camera. Okay. Uh, we will play a nice game, sir, from Monday onwards. Anybody who is not on camera will play a game called Waiting Room Game. Uh, looks like a squid game, right? Uh, something very similar. Waiting room game. So I'll be putting you into waiting room immediately. And you have to rejoin. Anyway, you can rejoin. I'll again put you in waiting room. You can again rejoin. This game we can play for entire class duration. So in other words, Monday onwards, video is compulsory. Okay, sir? Because initial days liberty is okay. But again, now we are entering into content. And I strictly believe that Please help me to on, uh, enable my second monitor because as of now, first monitor is sufficient for me. Done, sir. Are we good? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And so, because, you know, keep your, I'm, I'm just prepping you first itself. Again, don't blame me that, hey, KD, um, I'm in a waiting room. KD, you put me in the waiting room. So, instructions are told first itself. Done. So, 2005 extracted. I just right clicked and unzipped. Here you go. It's a software. So, how to get all this, we will guide you. Please, please wait. So, installing software is not a big deal. So, even a kid can do. Okay. I have my uh, my wife's cousin, uh, small, small guy, you know. Uh, this guy, if you just give him any 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 software, so he knows. Setup.exe, set up he'll start the installation and finish it. So he doesn't know what the software purpose, nothing, sir, but he can finish it. So, kids know it. We also know it. So, uh, what you can do is we can start with the installation, but if you don't, did you notice sir? on the screen? Now you are seeing three folders. First one is x86, meaning 32 bit platforms, meaning this software is for 32 bit systems. That means sir, in, in the SQL Server itself, there are three three folders, three three varieties, three variants, three options. 
If your laptop is a 32-bit laptop, install this software. If your laptop is a 64-bit laptop, install this software. If your laptop is an Itanium laptop, Itanium hardware laptop, then go for the first option. So that's what the meaning is. Now, wait, sir. before we continue with the conversation, let's go ahead and understand what is 32-bit, what is 64-bit, and what is Itanium. KD, I mean, sorry, why time waste? Uh, so no, 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 sir, please, you know, if you're installing means definitely if there is no background, I strictly would not entertain that, sir. So we should understand some of you might already know it. Excuse us for this one, but 32 bit, 64 bit and Itanium is what we are talking about. Hardware platforms. Okay, just a minute, my screen is loading. Sir, whether, uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of this one, so irrespective of your education background, irrespective of the education background. Sir, uh, if you are using a laptop, there are three layers. Obviously, the, uh, the inside one, the core is your hardware. Obviously, the hardware. And sir, on the hardware, you have operating system, OS, Windows OS, Linux OS, Mac OS, all that operating systems. And on the operating systems, you have application. Like SQL Server, Microsoft Office, what not, sir? Whatever softwares you install in your system. So, so technically, three types of, three things you will have, three layers. Hardware layer, operating system layer, and application layer. So, uh, what we need to understand here is, there are, First, let's talk about hardware layer. Is that okay? Hardware, hardware. So, are, PCs have evolved, sir. PCs have evolved. PCs have traveled through very tough times and literally today PCs are outstanding. Laptops or desktops or anything. So, uh, in the initial days, sir, olden days, we used to have 8-bit systems. 8-bit. Then came 16-bit systems. For, for many years, then came 32 bit systems for many years, even up to recently. And then came 64 bit systems. Sorry, don't expect 128 bits. Today we are in 64 bit platforms, meaning we all are using 64 bit hardwares mostly, all of us. So your phone in your hand, where is my phone? So a phone that you have is a is a is a is a 64 bit phones nowadays. So your phones are not 32 bit anymore. Your phones used to be 32 bit. Can I can I prove it to all of you? So 32 bit means 32 bit. Two to the power of 32. How much is the value, sir? Two to the power of 32. Mathematical experts, 90 percent marks. Five. Katie. <laughs> to the, sir, Google, 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 Google will give all the answers. That is the answer on the screen. Oh, no, 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 no. It's too big. Two to the power of 32, I said. Sir, this is the number. If you do an easy thing, sir, copy that number. Huh? Assume that's in bytes. That number is in bytes. Divided by 1024. Bytes becomes kilobytes divided by 1024. Kilobytes becomes megabytes divided by 1024. Megabytes becomes gigabytes. So 2 to the power of 32, if you convert, sir, it comes to 4 GB around. So just go 6 years back, 6 or 7 years back. How much was the max RAM on your phone? If you want to purchase a phone, how much was the maximum RAM on your phone, sir? 6 years back, I'm saying. 6 or 2 GB or 4 GB hardly. 2 GB RAM, 1 GB RAM, 2 GB RAM, yeah. maybe 3, max 4. We never had any phones more than 4 GB RAM. I'm talking about 6-7 years back only. Yeah. Everybody agrees, right, sir? Now, are, now we have got, we are spoiled by choice. So now you have 8 GB, 16 GB, 32 GB is coming up for uh, Asus Rogue, I think, ROG um, yeah. gaming phone, sir. So, so, so technically what I'm saying is six, seven years back, if you go and see why the phones had 4GB limitation, 
why they were never beyond 4 GB? Because they all were 32 bit hardware. All the old systems. Are you, sir, leave, leave phones aside, sir. Talk about your laptop. Your laptops never had more than 4 GB RAM. Now you have, it's okay. But laptops never had more than. So that means what, sir? 10, 12 years back, I'm saying, not now. 10, 12 years back, your laptops were 4 GB RAM, not more than 4. So that means at that time, they were 32 bit. And by the way, wait, my friend, uh, you have a who, who said that they have four cores and uh, four logical processors. Intel Pentium. Uh, somebody said in the class, right? So KD, I have four cores and four logical processors only in my system by firing MS Info 32. I'm sorry, I missed who it was. It's a, a, a everyone. Mohit, yes, Mohit. Mohit, what is the RAM in your system, Mohit? RAM size. 4 GB RAM carry. Correct, right? Perfect. So this is exactly what I was asking. So Mohit. Even I have four cores. Ah, so so somebody four cores, four cores. Me, Mohit has Mohit. You have four cores, right? Yes, carry four cores and four. Four cores and four logical processors into two nine. And sir, that means Mohit. Mohit, I'm just guessing. Can you run this command, sir? And check whether it is a 32 bit system or a 64 bit system. 64 bit system. Okay. okay. So it is 64. Okay. I thought it is 32. I am so sorry, sir. So everyone, sir, if you go to MS Info 32, you all can do it, sir. You can check in your PC whether it is 32 bit or 64 bit. So you can see X64. X64, sir. If it's a, now again, don't blame the manufacturers because KD, why this confusion? 32 means. So, um, 64 means x64, 32 means x86. What nonsense is this, Katie? It should have been x32. Easy mathematics. Good question. Katie, what does four core and eight logical processor means? What does that mean? Four cores means you have four. First of all, you have one processor on your motherboard. Yeah. Which has four. The processor is capable of four cores. So it has four cores. Each core can do is multi-threaded two tasks. So okay. four into two, eight logical processors you will be happy. Okay. Uh, did you miss that last question? No, no, I was there. Okay, okay. So then we had a conversation, right? Cores, yeah. Logical processors. That's how it is. Same thing. Same thing. So, so now everyone, uh, just a major point to everybody. So please listen to this. Um, sorry. It is 32, but my, but sir, naming wise, it's not X32. Okay. Naming wise, it is X, X86. So X86 means, so listen, sir, listen carefully. X86 means 32 bit systems. Where is it mentioned? Oh, sorry. Where did I keep? Where did I keep? Oh, it's not here. So maybe, yeah. okay. X86 means, okay. So here it is x86 means 32 bit systems x64 means 64 bit systems um, so so if you are using old hardware old hardware then you are in x86 now so you may ask a question why is it called as x86 why not x32 answer for that question is so in olden days they were called as 8086 family of processors 8086 family of processors. So processors are called as 8086, were called as, were in the past, 8086 family of processors. 80286, 80386. So look at this one. One minute. So bear with me. I'm just showing you, so not wasting. Yeah. 8016 bit. Okay. And later on, 80386 came. 80286 came. This is a 8086 family of processors are 16 bit. 8086 means 16 bit. Later on, 80286, 80386, next models came, sir, which were all 32 bit. Six, sir, we are talking about some, and most of us are not even born by that time, including me. So, so, so 8086 is 16 bit. 
later came 8012863866 like that some models came so to avoid confusion they started calling 8028680386 8038680386, right sir they removed all that and said x86 x can be Other than calling with that name, so just call it x86. So yeah, all x86 systems are what, sir? 32 bit. Normal, normal 8086 was how much? 16 bit systems. So processor works on bits, okay. And now latest technology is what, sir? X64, which is nothing but directly 64 bit. Now, this is a story. And by the way, sir, um, what is itanium then? Sir, itanium is also, itanium is also 64 bit only, but especially designed for servers. Itanium processors are specially designed for servers. I think a company called Intel and uh, I forgot another company. So I think two companies came forward, HP. HP and Intel came forward and made this hardware but later on it was a flop now itanium hardware is not there so in the market what will you find now if you go and purchase in the market what will you find sir x86 64 bit only 64 bit sir because this is also dead now so 32 bit is gone itanium was a flop so if you go and purchase any new laptop or any new server in the market today now you will purchase only x64 so I do, we do not want to waste time beyond this, but, uh, but sir, listen, last point. That means your hardware, the red one, red button, red box here will be either 32 bit old hardware or will be either 64 bit, the new one, or maybe itanium also. So these are three different hardware platforms. And by the way, remember, sir, which SQL Server are you installing now? 2005, correct? SQL Server 2005. That means go to year, now go to time machine, go to 2005 years. You are in which year now? 2005. In the year 2005, all these three options were available. 32 also was available. 64 bit was also available. Itanium also was available. That is why Microsoft gave all the three products like that. Sir. Now understood. If you go and install SQL Server 2019 now, no itanium is available. No, that no 32 bit is available. One second, so let me mute everyone. No itanium is available. No 32 bit is available. Only option you have for SQL Server 2019 is 64 bit. So I think let's stop here. And by the way, so one more thing. Like you have hardware level. 3264 itanium operating system also so windows operating system that you install windows operating system will be 32 bit 64 bit itanium again and sir application sql server whatever applications you are installing applications also must be that will be categorized 32 bit 64 bit applications so on a 32 bit hardware you can install only 32 bit operating system and 32 bit software uh, application so on a 64 bit hardware you can install you should inst install 64 bit operating system and 64 bit applications so don't mix and match doesn't sound good so that means so for example sir on a 64 bit hardware if i am installing 32 bit operating system and 32 bit application you know how it looks like michael shoemaker the sports car you're asking him to drive maruti 800 that's how it will sound meaning sir Full Josh in the engine hardware, sir. But the problem is you're driving, you're giving not the right capacity car for him. So, so, so something like that. So make sure if your operating system is, sorry, sir, if your hardware is 64 bit, operating system also must be 64 bit, application also must be 64 bit. It will be a good compatibility. Hopefully it was not a, not a time waste. Can I move on? Sir? Now, sir, in some interviews, in some interviews, we are getting this question called, hey, what is difference between 32-bit and 64-bit? Not itanium, 
32 bit and 64 bit. Sir. But well, listen, sir. listen. KD Achel, I will not answer this question. It's a very basic question. Tell them that ah, I do not work on this, that one. I don't know. How will it sound, sir, if you say I don't know for this question? It sounds like you don't know ABC. So that's how, that's an impression that will come up. Sir. So please, you know, it's a question that basics, right? Fundamentals, sir. Hey, somebody in an interview may ask you later, sir, SMN question for tomorrow. What is difference between DBMS and RDBMS? Sorry, I forgot to ask you this question. What is difference between DBMS and RDBMS? Both are database management systems. But what is the difference between them? Sir? This is also a common fundamental interview question. So may I expect? Yeah. In DBMS, the data will be stored in flat files. Perfect. Very good. DBMS, the data will be stored in tables. Perfect. Perfect. First and fundamental and perfect answer. In DBMS, data will be stored in flat files. Just dump. Data will be stored in the flat files. In RDBMS, data will be stored in tables. Because I told you, right, EF codes, one of the rules, sir. What was that? EF codes, one of the rules. Data must be stored in the form of rows and columns. He clearly stated one of the rules. 13 rules, one of 12 rules, one of the rules. So very good, Maheshwari. Thank you. So data will be stored in flat files. RDBMS will be storing data in the form of tables. Continue, Maheshwari. I'm sure you're ready for the next answer. Next point. Okay. The tables must have relationship, will have relationship between them. In, R in DBMS, you don't have relationship between the tables, sir. In RDBMS, you, can, you have relationship between the tables, meaning two tables can be related, joined, related together. Hey, don't worry about that, sir. But remember these two names. As said, these two points are sufficient. DBMS stores data in flat files. RDBMS stores data in table form, tabular form. Hmm? Also, RDBMS can handle a lot of data. Uh, yeah, large size, right? Size, yeah. size, yeah. DBMS, compared to DBMS, RDBMS can handle large volumes of data. Perfect, sir. And uh, RDBMS are... Uh, no, no, DBMS also doesn't have duplications. It's also good. Okay, anyway, sir, those three points are sufficient, sir. Three points. I got the answer. I thought of asking tomorrow, but three points. It will be there in the content. Don't worry. The material which we are going to give you, it has it has those points. Huh? Don't write now. If you want to write down, write down. So it's your choice. Okay. So same way. So there will be a question coming up. Difference between 32 bit and 64 bit. So please, you know, fundamental points, sir. Uh, sir, make it a simple. Two, three. These many points also not needed. Huh? Just two points or three points. Yes. 32 bit systems are old hardware. Old, old, old hardware platform. 64 bit are latest. 32 bit systems because 2 to the power of 32 is equal to 4 GB. Uh, they, you cannot have more than 4 GB of RAM in those systems. In 64 bit systems, sir, 2 to the power of 64. That means, sir, mathematically, mathematically, 16 exabytes EB. Or EB means a lot, sir. A lot. I'll talk about it. I have it in the next slides. Please wait. EB means a lot, sir. 16 exabytes, meaning practically 7 to 8 TB. So RAM, RAM is not measured. So how much RAM you have on your phone? 4 GB, 8 GB. You are saying GB, right? You're not saying TB. How much hard disk you have on your phone? My phone has one TB hard disk. So hard disk is measured nowadays in TBs, TB, terabyte. Uh, RAM is measured in GB still. TBs of RAM is not available. Not available as of now. For phones, I'm saying. So RAM you measure in GB, hard disk you may measure in TB, current market standards. So, sir, what I'm saying is for 64-bit systems, you can have, oh my God, 7 to 8 TB of RAM. TB, TB of RAM, not GB, sir. 1000 GB is equal to 1 TB. Meaning how many times or almost? So here it is 4 GB. There it is 7 to 8 TB. How many times, sir? Thousand into oh my god, too many times. The fold is too high. So here max 4 GB, there's 7 to 8 TB. Uh, so next one, sir. In 32 bit systems, transfer speeds are less. 64 bit systems, transfer speeds are more. So these two points you tell it's sufficient. Let's not waste time anymore on this one.
So I just showed you, okay, look at this, sir. 32 bit systems, two to the power of 32 equal to this number, uh, four GB and 64 bit systems, sir. One second, please. So for 64 bit system, see, look at two to the power of 64. This is the number 16 exabyte. I mean, exabyte 16 EB practically, sir, it's seven to eight TB. Okay. Wait, sir. No, 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 no. I have to stop here. I have to stop here. Some of you are giving a question mark expression. So tell me one thing. Every laptop or every system has processor. So practically, that use RAM is not available in market yet, right? Seven. One, uh, as of today, sir, one TB, two TB RAM is available. Two TB. Okay. Uh, not for laptops, of course, but for uh, servers. Okay. For laptop, how much is available now? Sixty-four GB, I think. One twenty-eight. Sixty-four or one twenty-eight is available, sir. Okay. So now, sir, Wait, process. Uh, one question here, like. Uh... A project that I have a 64, uh, uh, 64 bit uh, uh, PC or laptop, but I don't have that much RAM, uh, physical RAM installed. I have just uh, 128 or 256 GB of RAM. So what will be the difference between the uh, the speed, processor speed? Like how will it work? And see, you are talking about the maximum speed, the right? capability of the 64 bit machine or will, will you, mean, it you mean on you mean now no, I, I, yeah, didn't get the, yeah, I didn't yeah. get the i didn't get the question so like uh we are talking about the maximum capacity of a 64 bit machine right so uh will it be uh, like uh, depend on the ram actual ram uh, physical ram installed on the system or like uh it will have the capability uh irrespective of the ram size Irrespective of the RAM, sir. RAM will of course give some speed, but not. Uh... Still, I didn't get the question actually. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not able to explain you. Like, uh, what? Uh... What he is asking is, KD, like, as of now, all the PCs are having uh, 12 GB or 18 GB or one 64 GB RAM, if you can see. And maximum capacity is seven te uh, terabytes, right? Seven to eight terabytes. In so uh, no, um, in the 60, uh, 64, 64 bit space. Bit, yeah, uh. yeah. Yeah. So in the real case scenario, like it's but obvious, right? Like our PC will be working slow as compared to seven to eight terabytes RAM. Okay, sir. Uh, having more RAM in the system doesn't make your system fast. Not at all. Having more RAM in the system will allow you to use more applications. Right. So RAM will never speed your system. No. Oh, that's, that's what that's what I'm asking. Like uh, whether it is like the processor capability is dependent uh, on the process, RAM processor. Or? Processor. Processor. Sir. Speed of the system is always dependent on processor and hard drive. Because see, Rahul has 16 GB RAM in his system. I have 32 GB RAM in my system, sir. The only performance difference between Rahul's system and my system is in my system, I may be able to open more applications. Rahul will be able to open less applications. Other than that, uh, the performance is always dependent on processor and performance is always dependent on hard drive. I mean, hard disk also. Uh, RAM, of course, helps. I'm not saying no. Uh, but sir, okay, before we go to that discussion, so everybody, so I saw some of you not feeling comfortable with this discussion. That's why where video helps. Okay. So let me take one step back. So installation we will do, so, but, but this is also important. So tell me in your laptop or my laptop today, today, sir, today, how do you measure the performance of a system? My system is fast. I'll raise my tolerance. My system is top. How do I decide? How do I tell you that my system is superb? How? First point, sir, process. The life is processor. Processor is the life of, sorry. Processor is the life of a system. Depending on what processor you have in your system, how many cores you have, performances, performance will accordingly vary. Correct, sir? Everybody agrees with this. After seeing the processor discussion, core discussion, I mean, more cores, more performance. Right, sir? So please help me understand here. Let's assume, you tell me now, I have a, 24 core processor. Hmm? Sir, core only, not only core, 
so every processor has got that speed also gigahertz megahertz something how much was that 4.355 so nowadays nowadays processors have up to 5 gigahertz so processor of course again how many cores you have also is important so how many cores meaning at a time how many processors are there in your system so which can make your system run fast at a time so number of cores also matters plus each core speed is how much so 4.3 gigahertz so gigahertz processor is measured in the form of gigahertz hertz 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 only some physics no i can't teach physics i don't know physics so hertz hertz is the measurement so gigahertz processor is measured in gigahertz perfect ram ram is a storage device sir hard disk nahi ram is a storage device so i told you yesterday sir whatever i typed in the notepad now is temporary that means all this stored data is getting stored where in the ram ram is compulsory for every system how much ram your system will have sir depends now as i said for 32 bit systems ram is 4 gb not more than 4 gb for 64 bit systems ram is 7 to 8 tb just now i told maximum ram i am saying practically 7 to 8 tb okay so let's assume sir i have a uh, i have a 12 gb ram in my laptop 24 core is too much okay 12 core i have 12 gb ram i have hard disks sir hard disks are measured in tbs storage right hard disk 2 tb 1 tb 3 tb 4 tb how much ever you have and sir better if it is a ssd we had a discussion normal hard disks spindle ssds are fast so sir if i have this much configuration on my laptops are like wow i have a super laptop and sir nowadays 12 gb is nothing people are having close to 32 gb in laptops i am saying 32 gb 20 gb 32 gb has become kind of common or common means you know, people are willing to spend that much money are you getting my point sir the ram is also important sir more ram will allow you to uh, use more sir i can play a game i can play a game at the same time while game is playing on a second screen i can do some tasks how because if i have more ram sir i can do more tasks game i can play at the same time i can watch a movie or i can do something else some other software photoshop i can run uh, or maya or any other softwares i can use and do anything okay can i give the example Yeah, yeah, sure, Venkatesh. Please. General, my, we are using the phones, mobile phones. Huh? If you open the too many apps, initially first app we can't open that. What we have opened the page. If we open after ten or follow apps, again it will restart the first app. If we have the more RAM, we can again continue the the previous app. Uh, like example, first app, while uh, using the games. by using the games on you can get that point definitely sir so especially on a phone right yeah, absolutely you can easily get that point sir now so you got this point let me ask you all a simple question what is chitty specifications chitty chitty robo yeah rajnikanth robo sir <laughs> so can you please google and tell me what are chitty specifications so chitty is also a robot human robot and it has got definitely processor inside it no doubt about it it has got ram inside it no doubt about it it has got hard drive inside it no doubt about it so go google sir and tell me what are chitty specifications quickly quickly sir. shouldn't take long so sorry about this but this is important memory one says about uh, one second sir memory was what ram ram memory means ram right one one gigabyte gigabyte oh okay speed 1 terahertz Speed one terahertz. One terahertz. H H. H. Ah, yeah, sir, frequency. sir, look at the one, sir. Gigahertz, sir. Are we are still in the old zamana? Chitti is like somewhere <laughs> after us. Sir. See, tera is thousand giga. Uh, sorry, sir. thousand giga is one tera. Meaning, chitti is thousand times faster than us. Thousand times faster than what we have today. So, um, and by the way, uh, Mr. Shankar has made some research. Huh? blindly did not make a movie because 
he gave the specifications clearly that chitti part 1 part 2 same specification by the way so um, but anyway sir chitti's performance is 1 terahertz which is 1000 times faster than what we have today in future this may come up we don't have as of now second thing sir chitti's memory right ram sir is 1 zettabyte zb we are in zb sir gb this guy has zettabyte so sir just want to take a uh, privilege of 5 minutes more not more than that so look at this one i mean if somebody is not aware of this one this math can help you so uh, whatever you store in a computer whatever you store in a computer 1 and 0 is called as bit 0 and 1 1 you that's called as a bit value 4 bits is called as 1 nibble 8 bits is called as 1 byte from whoever from computer background will know this if not for others i'm just showing this one sir 1024 bytes will be 1 kilobyte 1024 kilobyte will be megabyte 1024 megabyte will be gigabyte 1024 gigabyte will be terabyte 1024 terabyte will be petabyte 1024 petabyte will be exabyte sir and 1024 exabyte will be zettabyte so chitti is 1000 into 1000 into 1000 sir that many times more ram chitti has than us our current systems okay chalo uh, somebody has a 1 terabyte ram 1 terabyte ram in their system chitti is still 10000 times not 1000 into 1000 one 1 one lakh times faster than you 10 lakh times faster than faster more memory than what we have so zeta byte sir no need to remember all this stuff but uh, can i ask you a question sir but remember the storage unit storage conversion it's very important um, or maybe in the content it is there but sir for your mathematics i'll take 2 minutes pause right so this number this is the number convert please help me convert so uh, i always give a easy formula right never write in bytes write in the highest form easy formula let me remove some numbers to make it easy sir so, now always divide remove that 3 3 numbers sir right 3 3 the thousand right thousand divide by thousand means remove 3 3 numbers if you remove these three numbers what will it become bytes becomes kilobytes am i right sir if you remove three numbers bytes becomes kilobytes if you remove the next three numbers kilobytes becomes megabytes if you remove the next three numbers megabyte becomes Gigabytes. gigabytes if i remove the next three numbers gigabyte becomes terabyte terabytes if i remove the next three numbers terabyte Tera becomes uh -huh, tera tera becomes exa tera becomes tera becomes peta sorry sir thank you peta pb so so that means sir uh, this is 34 pb so whenever you have numbers like this sir please remove three three numbers and uh, by the way this is not an exact number but somehow this is an uh. approximate number so approximately 34 petabytes is the size so so please no be comfortable with this conversion it's important not only conversion sir bytes kilobytes megabytes gigabytes terabytes petabytes exabytes zettabytes uh, you auto or you auto brata that are not even required sir. okay so clear ha uh, somehow uh, mr uh, what's his name uh, shankar director did not reveal hard disk of chitti you will not find it sir. only memory you will find and uh, processor speed you will find okay yes okay done 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 sir back on the note i'm so sorry uh, i don't know why we deviated but this is important to explain that's why we had deviated okay we'll stop the class now but before we continue sir what what is for tomorrow uh, sir now to install sql server what do you need proper hardware sir 32 bit or 64 bit some hardware you need to have that we already have so now you tell me sir which folder shall i go into 64 bit no yeah my laptop is a 64 bit laptop right ms info 32 i'll check ms info 32 check that it oh my system is a 
a 64 bit system so i'll jump into 64 bit system folder right sir in sql server 2005 you'll have two folders sir servers and tools if you go to servers you are installing sql server software if you're going into tools sir you're only installing the needed tools so no 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 we want software plus tools both so then go to servers okay and then sir now you need to start setup.ex which we will discuss tomorrow tomorrow we'll complete the installation tomorrow is my voice okay for everybody yes katie okay. yes because somebody somebody said in the chat that the voice was not clear okay so that means that's it so now we are going to start the installation which will start actually tomorrow today was only that round right, the round. round the circle discussion that's it. and tomorrow onward there is no look back we will start and so i am sure uh, in tomorrow's session 200% we cannot complete 2005 installation reason there are nearly around six screens and i have to explain each and every screen sir so it will take time and one more thing you should remember sir by monday because uh, one time if we finish all the six screens right for 2005 also same screens 2008 also same screens 8r2 12 14 that means a one time discussion can save our time in every other installation so screens will remain same options and features might change clear sir so first we will spend understanding all the screens one by one okay that's all sir. then i think uh, we are good for the day okay one question uh now we are installing 2005 in your system now do we need to install in parallel in our laptop as not well? not right now what the plan is that let me finish let me show all the versions first 5 to 12 uh, sorry to 19 then that means by that by the time we finish all these discussions next week somewhere wednesday we will reach wednesday or thursday most mm -hmm. uh, including all the installations i'm saying by the time we reach there then we are going to start the lab okay so we will uh, do the installations in the lab so just i'm just requesting all of you to wait for a week less than a week and then we will start lab and everything okay one more question kedi so now uh, we have a different versions of sql server so like uh, uh, for each version we we are installing it uh, some of the softwares like after up upgradation has happened we the uh, prior version will not support uh, uh, the recurrent one so in that sense we need to uninstall the already existing thing and reinstall the oh, okay, okay. new one good that's question. So what you're saying is, if I have 2005 and yeah. I'm installing 2008 R2, should I remove 2005 or should I keep? So answer for that mm. question is migration. You can keep 2005 also, and you can install 88 R2 also and 12 also, then 14 also. In my laptop, I'm going to install all the versions. So and one more thing, if you don't okay. want 2005 and remove it and put 2008 or 8 R2 in its place. then you have to wait for a topic called upgradation as rajat said just now so upgradation okay. meaning you don't want 2005 you want to okay. remove it and you want to replace it with 8 r2 then it's called as upgrade we will do it okay. late, later it comes in level 2 last uh okay. upgradation so but in our demo now we will install 5 also we'll keep that we'll install 8 8 r2 also we'll keep that we'll install 12 also we'll keep that everything will So that means we are not doing any upgradation nor any migration as of now. But in level two, we will discuss. That. So it means uh, all the versions we can install parallelly. Our system will support everything. And yeah, to answer your question, one more point also. Microsoft Office, right? For example, mm -hmm. Microsoft Office. If I have Office two thousand ten old version, if I want to install Office two thousand thirteen latest version, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all that. So I have to. You have to. It will remove the old Office. and put a new office in that place for microsoft office uh, all versions you can't have in a system whereas for sql server yes 5 8 everything you can have office will not yeah. so some some softwares don't allow multiple versions sql server mm. does a, does allow okay that's my question thank you installing all the versions at time like no no we are just we are just experimenting so normally we will not install all right only only one version you decide to install so uh thank you venkatesh thank you maheshwari thank you lavanya thank you sai lakshmi thank you sri pujita thank you ramesh thank you abhilash thank you rahul obviously sir thank you shiva krishna dr babu thank you shweta thank you asia thank you kumaraswami thank you abhilash 
thank you Shweta, thank you Nasir already said, thank you Vamsi, Suresh, just now you went and again you came back, but you were on, board, on the camera all through the class, sir. so all of you, I'm watching you for the last one week, sir, not even for a minute you go off the camera, and if you go, you come back immediately. So thank you for that support. This is exact dedication, exact support I'm requesting from all of you. Thanks a lot. Let's meet tomorrow morning. Same time, same place. Yeah, thank you. Very, 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 uh, like so for today's class, uh, can you provide the video? Because I uh, I want to go through that uh, architecture thing again. No, yes, sir. it's already being updated every day. If you're okay. seeing it. Thank you. You're following the link, right? Yes. Yeah, the link is being yeah. updated every day with the sessions. So, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you, okay, everyone. Talk to you tomorrow, sir. Bye bye. Have a nice thank day. You. Bye -bye. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Bye bye. 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 Thank you.